Donald Trump's economic policies and governance approach pose significant challenges for the future of Secure Access Service Edge, or SASE, technology, as his administration's chaotic policy implementation, mass federal workforce cuts through Dowsh, and broader attacks on technological infrastructure threaten to undermine the stable regulatory environment and skilled workforce essential for cybersecurity innovation. According to reports from the Center for European Reform and the Economic Policy Institute, Trump's weakening of federal institutions and defunding of scientific research risks, ceding technological leadership to competitors such as China, while creating unprecedented economic uncertainty that could stifle investment in critical security technologies. Thank you for tuning into your Sassy Gateway YouTube channel. Subscribe if you want more straightforward content like this about SASE and cybersecurity topics. The Department of Government Efficiency, or DOUG, has systematically dismantled critical cybersecurity capabilities across federal agencies, creating vulnerabilities that directly threaten the security foundations upon which SASE architectures depend. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, lost 130 specialized staff members, including top recruits, specifically tasked with protecting the nation's critical infrastructure from foreign and domestic cyber attacks. These cuts targeted personnel with highly technical expertise in national cybersecurity who actively defend against Russian and Chinese hacking operations. Beyond CISA, the broader cybersecurity ecosystem faces unprecedented personnel losses that compromise the institutional knowledge essential for maintaining government security standards. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, which develops cybersecurity frameworks that inform SASE implementations, has um, experienced significant workforce reductions alongside cuts at the National Science Foundation and the Department of Homeland Security Cybersecurity Divisions. These agencies collectively lost more than 400 employees. With the reductions conducted in what the terminated staff described as a haphazard and arbitrary manner without consideration for mission critical positions. The timing of these reductions proves particularly problematic as the cybersecurity industry already faces severe understaffing and burnout issues. Art Zeal, CEO of Tech Careers Marketplace Dice, notes that long hours and burnout afflict cybersecurity professionals similar to air traffic controllers with the federal government experiencing a cybersecurity professional deficit for the past decade. Federal cybersecurity work requires unique expertise in government databases that are extremely complicated and also old, in addition to being full of people's private information, according to Meredith Broussard, Research Director at the NYU Alliance for Public Interest Technology. Dowd's approach has also systematically weakened IT modernization efforts, which are critical to securing infrastructure development. The General Services Administration's Technology Transformation Service, which leads government IT modernization efforts, was crippled through the firing of technologists and the dismantling of its 18F team, responsible for designing key systems such as login.gov and IRS direct file. Similarly, the U.S. Digital Service was downsized and transformed into the U.S. Digital Service prompting 21 uh, digital service employees to resign in protest over actions that compromise core government systems, jeopardize American sensitive data, or dismantle critical public services. These workforce reductions have created a strategic vulnerability where fewer qualified personnel remain to safeguard networks from attacks, patch vulnerabilities, or train the next generation of federal cybersecurity professionals for SASE implementations that rely on robust government security standards and stable regulatory frameworks. 
this systematic degradation of federal cybersecurity capabilities represents a fundamental threat to the security posture that enterprise zero trust architectures are designed to complement and integrate with. The proposed mass deportation operations will place enormous strain on government IT infrastructure precisely when cybersecurity capabilities are most compromised, creating cascading vulnerabilities that undermine the secure network foundations essential for SASE implementations. According to the American Immigration Council, implementing mass deportations would require building 24 times more ICE detention capacity than currently exists and establishing over 1,000 new immigration courtrooms to process deportations at the proposed scale of 1 million people annually. This massive infrastructure expansion would demand unprecedented IT system deployments, database integrations, and network connectivity, all occurring while federal cybersecurity teams have been gutted through douge cuts. The technological complexity becomes staggering when considering that removing 13.3 million undocumented immigrants will require a completely transformed federal IT architecture capable of coordinating between multiple agencies, including ICE, CBP, DOJ immigration courts, and state local enforcement systems. Each detention facility, courtroom, and processing center would require secure network connectivity, biometric systems, case management databases, and real-time communication capabilities representing thousands of new network endpoints that must be secured against increasingly sophisticated nation-state cyber attacks targeting weakened government systems. The integration of artificial intelligence adds another layer of complexity and vulnerability to this already strained infrastructure. The Department of Homeland Security has established an AI Safety and Security Board and allocated $5 million for an AI office specifically to manage these technologies across enforcement operations. Mass deportation plans will likely expand AI surveillance systems well beyond current border applications, creating what cybersecurity experts describe as a surveillance network that could extend beyond the border and into communities across the country. This AI-powered infrastructure expansion occurs precisely when the technical expertise needed to secure these systems has been systematically removed through federal workforce cuts. The economic disruption, you know, really compounds these technical challenges as key IT industries face severe workforce shortages. Mass deportations would remove nearly 14% of construction workers responsible for building data centers and IT infrastructure, while eliminating approximately 1 million undocumented immigrant entrepreneurs who generated $27.1 billion in business income, including numerous IT services companies. For SASE architectures that rely on reliable government security standards and stable network infrastructure, this combination of massive new IT deployments, depleted cybersecurity oversight, and a disrupted technical workforce creates an environment where honestly, implementing secure access frameworks effectively across hybrid cloud government network architectures becomes nearly impossible. Trump's comprehensive tariff regime has created a direct cost escalation crisis for cloud service providers that fundamentally undermines the economic viability of SASE deployments across enterprise networks. The administration imposed a devastating 25% tariff on cloud computing and IT services originating from Chinese infrastructure, forcing hyperscalers like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud to absorb massive operational cost increases that inevitably flow downstream to enterprise customers. These tariffs specifically target the hardware components essential for data center operations, including servers, networking equipment, and storage systems that form the backbone of cloud infrastructure supporting SASE architectures. 
The ripple effects extend beyond simple hardware costs to encompass the entire cloud service delivery model. Major providers face a 20% tariff on software licenses and intellectual property products from China, directly impacting the AI and cybersecurity software components that power advanced SASE security functions. Microsoft has already halted data center projects consuming two gigawatts of capacity across the United States and Europe due to concerns about oversupply. At the same time, HSBC has warned of broader spending slowdowns among cloud companies. This infrastructure freeze occurs precisely when SASE implementations require expanded cloud capacity to handle distributed security processing and zero trust verification at scale. The cost structure becomes particularly problematic for mid-market enterprises implementing SASE solutions. TD Cowan analysis indicates that tariffs on software development services ranging from 10% to 15% are forcing companies to reconsider offshore partnerships that previously made cloud-based security services cost-effective, small and medium-sized enterprises that depend on cost-efficient outsourced services now face inflated expenses for the very cloud infrastructure that makes SASE architectures accessible to organizations without massive internal IT budgets. Perhaps most critically, the tariff impact on semiconductor supply chains poses a threat to the specialized hardware required for SASE edge computing functions. NVIDIA's announcement of a $500 billion investment to manufacture AI chips domestically came as the company faces significant disruption to its cost structure from tariffs affecting its contracted manufacturing relationships with TSMC. For SASE deployments that rely on edge processing capabilities for real-time security analysis and network uh, optimization, these hardware cost increases and supply chain uncertainties create fundamental deployment barriers that compromise the technology's core value proposition of distributed cloud-native security delivery. The Yale Budget Lab projects these tariffs will cost households an average of $2,700 annually the technology price increases representing a substantial portion of this burden. For enterprises already struggling with cybersecurity budget constraints, the combination of higher cloud infrastructure costs, increased software licensing fees, and disrupted hardware supply chains creates an environment where SASE implementations become financially prohibitive for many organizations that would benefit most from their security capabilities. The most catastrophic impact Trump's policies could have on SASE emerges from the convergence of weakened federal cybersecurity oversight, massive infrastructure demands, and economic disruption, creating a perfect storm that could fundamentally undermine the security architecture upon which modern enterprises depend. The elimination of Social Security Administration field offices represents a particularly insidious threat to SASE implementations across government and enterprise networks. With the SSA already operating at its lowest staffing levels in 25 years, the closure of approximately 7,500 federal offices forces millions of Americans to conduct sensitive benefit transactions through compromised digital channels. Starting April 14th, 2025, individuals can no longer apply for social security benefits over the phone. Instead, they must create an online account or visit an office in person. This digital first mandate creates massive new attack surfaces precisely when federal cybersecurity capabilities have been systematically dismantled. The paper check elimination mandate requiring all Social Security recipients to establish electronic payment systems by September 30th, 2025, compounds these vulnerabilities exponentially. Roughly 456,000 Americans receiving paper 
checks must now establish digital financial connections through networks that honestly lack adequate cybersecurity oversight, making them prime targets for nation state actors and cyber criminals. For SASE architectures designed to secure these digital interactions, the combination of forced digitization and weakened security oversight creates an environment where really implementing zero trust principles becomes nearly impossible. The impact of the deportation policy on social security funding creates a financial crisis that threatens the economic stability underlying long-term SASE investments. The Penn Wharton budget model estimates that unauthorized workers contributed $24 billion in social security taxes in 2024 while being ineligible for benefits. Mass deportation policies would eliminate this critical revenue stream resulting in a $133 billion deficit over 10 years and an $884 billion deficit over 30 years for Social Security. The Committee for Responsible Federal Budget Projects that Trump's combined policies would advance Social Security insolvency by three years from 2034 to 2031, requiring either a 33% benefit cut or a 50% tax increase to restore solvency. This fiscal collapse creates a cascading effect where enterprises face simultaneous pressures from higher taxes, reduced government technology spending, and economic uncertainty that really makes long-term SASE investments untenable. The deregulation approach favored by the administration further exacerbates these risks by removing the regulatory frameworks that provide essential cybersecurity guidelines for small and medium enterprises. Without robust federal oversight, SMEs operating with chronic resource constraints become increasingly vulnerable to cyber threats, undermining the distributed security model that SASE architectures are designed to protect. The worst case scenario emerges when these factors converge. Forced digitization without adequate security oversight, massive infrastructure strain from deportation operations, economic instability from social security funding crises, and deregulated cybersecurity standards create an environment where SASE implementations not only fail to provide adequate protection, but honestly become attack vectors themselves. The systematic dismantling of federal cybersecurity expertise means there are insufficient qualified personnel to identify, respond to, or prevent the sophisticated attacks that will inevitably target these weakened systems, potentially creating a national security crisis that extends far beyond individual enterprise networks to threaten the entire digital infrastructure upon which the modern economy depends.